This video will cover the replication of DNA section of the Higher Human Biology course in Unit 1. This is the first of two parts. This will cover DNA structure and the second part will cover DNA replication. Initially you need to know the location of DNA within a cell. So from National 5 you should know that that's within the nucleus and often you'll see it shown in a diagram like so with the DNA and the genetic material bundled up and looking quite messy. So when you zoom in on that slightly the cell is often shown like this. So within the cell then and within the nucleus, these structures are chromosomes. Now these are chromosomes which have duplicated before mitosis or meiosis. Um, that's not important in that fact, it's just generally how it's represented. So when we zoom in on these chromosomes, what we see is something that looks like this. Now the chromosomes, when you untwist the molecule that's within that chromosome, chromosomes are made up of DNA. So you untwist it and you see this structure. Now this structure here is a DNA double helix and a short section of DNA is called a gene. Now so far this is all National 5 revision. So when we look at a gene and we zoom in on that, we get a molecule that looks like this. Now that molecule is a DNA double helix. Okay, the double comes from the fact that it is double stranded, so there are two strands. Okay, the helix comes from the fact that it is twisted. So this is one strand that flows down here. And then the other strand flows on the other side. So along this way. So that shows the molecule has been twisted. So each of these ones that I've highlighted in green or in blue represents a backbone. Now from National 5 you didn't know what a backbone was composed of but we will learn about that in a moment. As well as that in National 5 you needed to know the names of the bases. So these letters A, T, G and C will represent the bases. So A would be the base adenine, T would be the base thymine, G is the base guanine, and C is the base cytosine. Now these are often paired together because this is the only way that they will bond to make a DNA molecule. So there is bonding between the bases that hold these two strands together. So, so far this has all been National 5 revision. When it comes to higher, it becomes a bit more detailed and you need to know more about the actual structure within it. So as I said, you only need to know in National 5 about the backbone, but in higher you have to know the details of the backbone. So the diagram I'm going to show you next will then show this backbone. So at the moment, there is just a small section of a DNA molecule. It has been untwisted and is just two strands. And one section of this, one area, ignoring the other side of it for the moment. So cover up here. This one structure here is what's called a nucleotide. Okay, specifically a DNA nucleotide. So a nucleotide is composed of three parts. The first part is the phosphate, which is represented by this circle. The second part is what's known as a deoxyribose sugar. Now that's where DNA gets its name because deoxyribose sugar is the sugar composed or within DNA and DNA is called deoxyribonucleic acid. And then within that nucleotide you also have a base. Now just the same as National 5, the bases are the exact same A, T, G and C. But in higher example questions, you'd always have to name them fully. 
So in this DNA nucleotide, it's made of three parts and that's the same for everyone that I'm going to have below this in the diagram. Each nucleotide, when it binds to another nucleotide on the other side of a DNA molecule, will bind by hydrogen bonds. Okay, and I'm going to show you the whole molecule now. Each time that you see a base, it would join together with another base using hydrogen bonds. Okay, so these green bits that I'm adding represent hydrogen bonds. Now the reason I've left these two out is just to remind us about complementary base pairing. So if there was a thymine on this side, this base therefore would be adenine. So A and T always pair together and always bond using hydrogen bonds. And then G for guanine and C for cytosine always pair together. And they would bind together using hydrogen bonds. So we have one strand of DNA going down the left hand side and one strand on the right. Now you'll notice that they're pointing in a different way. And they're pointing a different way because this DNA molecule and all DNA molecules are arranged as an anti-parallel arrangement. Now what that means is that they are equally distant apart, but that they run in opposite directions. So I'll explain what that means too. This end ends in a phosphate, okay? and it's pointing this way. Now, when we have a phosphate at one end of a strand, it is known as the five prime end. Okay, and it's known as a five prime end because it ends in a phosphate. Now, if we follow this strand up the way, this one ends in that deoxyribose sugar, and therefore this end is called the three prime end, and it ends in a deoxyribose sugar. Now the other strand that's complementary to it is running in a different direction. So notice the way that the pentagons of the um, deoxyribose sugar are pointing. These are pointing down, these are pointing up. So if we look at the ends for the prime ends, this, the lowest point in this, is a deoxyribose sugar. So this, therefore, is your three prime end. Again, if you work your way along, this, therefore, ends in a phosphate. So it would be your five prime end. Now you might get a more simplified diagram, just looking very more, no, very straightforward at it, which would show you a very simple molecule of DNA. And that means that when you look at this diagram and it gives you the ends of it, it should always be five prime, one end, running down to the three prime on the other end. Now because this is an anti-parallel arrangement, the other end should be the opposite way around. So this end should be five prime, and therefore this end should be three prime. You will never see a molecule of DNA that ends with a three and then another three. Okay, so you would never see that. And you would also never see a molecule that ends with a five and a five on the same strand either. Okay, so you would never see these. These are incorrect, so if it was an option in a multiple choice, you would not choose these. You always have to have three in one end and a five in the other. Three in one end, five in the other. Okay, so at the moment, this isn't actually a full molecule of DNA because although there are nucleotides and they're paired across to the other side of another strand and paired in other um, nucleotides and bases, they aren't actually forming a strand yet. Now there is one more type of bond that you need to know with this and it is actually called a sugar phosphate bond. And the reason it's called a sugar phosphate bond is because it joins the sugar of one nucleotide to the phosphate of another. And this is how you would join nucleotides together and therefore how you would form a strand. So this is a sugar phosphate bond.
Now to make a complete strand of DNA, you have to join the sugar of one to the phosphate of another and continue all the way down. Note exactly where I'm joining this bond. It's the point that's closest to that phosphate on that pentagon, right, that would then join with the phosphate. So once I've formed a full strand of sugar phosphate bonds and joined each of those nucleotides together, this whole molecule here is called a sugar phosphate backbone. Okay, so I'll label it on the other side once I've completed the, uh, the bond. So phosphate to sugar, phosphate to sugar, phosphate to sugar, and then the final phosphate to sugar. So sugar phosphate bond. So this whole thing now, because it is all bonded together and all the nucleotides are joined, is called a sugar phosphate backbone. Now normally in a DNA molecule it is twisted into the double helix, but for the purposes of illustrating this, it's often shown as a flat diagram. Okay, so this covers all the DNA structure. In the next video will cover the DNA replication section.